As long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the rivers flow. My name is Flying White Eagle. This name came to my grandfather in ceremony, who said that an ancestor on the other side recognized my spirit and gave their name for me to use on my journey. For the Nehiao, the Cree people, the eagle is a symbol of far sight and leadership, going on ahead to see and to lead the way forward. That is a lot to live up to, <laughs> but especially when I think about the fact that I will add to this name in my life and pass it along to a descendant one day when I recognize them from the other side. And even more so because like many indigenous youth these days, I grew up in this city and I wonder every day, how can I better be an indigenous person when everything has been paved over? I mean, I live in the city, I, you know, I, I figure that I can't wear the same clothes, I have to live somewhere else, and, and I don't think that that's true. So, for work I am actually a communication strategist and, and a marketer, and, and I find that these things can actually be connected with the work that I do. So, So this is my younger brother, and he's actually a companion with me on the path. And he's had a lot of the same questions that I've actually had. And he's an actor, so some of these questions might look a little bit different on the surface, but at the core, they're one and the same, and they both come back to these really core questions of who are we and where do we belong? Last spring, we decided to answer these questions, and we thought it would be a good idea to house these questions in the journey that we're taking in a social enterprise that we named after our language, Nahayawin. So we started with an assets-based approach, which is essentially looking at what we already had in terms of skills, knowledge, and lived experience, and going from there. So as I mentioned before, my skills are in technology and communications, and uh, you know, looking at those skill sets, I don't think I would have assumed that, that those would be applicable to, to what we were trying to do, but it turns out three of my favorite tools actually were very useful. Modularity, systems thinking, as well as my favorite rule, the KISS rule, or keep it simple, stupid. So modularity is the practice of breaking things down into much smaller parts so you can see how you can create them and switch them in and out of other systems. And systems thinking is how you actually see how the interdependent structures of a system interact. In really simple terms, modularity helps you see how things are broken down. And systems thinking helps you see how things come together. So I had all these tools in and I set out and uh, one of my favorite teaching moments from this last year was actually my trip to Standing Rock. So I arrived in minus 30 weather uh, along with hundreds of others and uh, what I loved was how the Standing Rock Sioux accepted everyone in, gave everybody really interesting information so that we could respect their tradition from a place of understanding and knowledge and gave everybody work to do. And funnily enough, a lot of people said that you couldn't actually understand what the entire movement was until you worked in the kitchens. So when I came home, I started an initiative called Tatawa, which means welcome, there is room. And it really seeks to do that here. Invite everyone in, indigenous, non-indigenous, and like give everybody information so that people can understand and move forward together. So when Hunter and I backed up from this project, we realized that there are tons of different projects that we can actually do that come from this place of wanting to really problem solve and leverage unity in our communities. Projects like Indigenized Tech that seeks to, you know, bring more cultural diversity to the tech sector, as well as the Urban Indigenous Survival Guide, a podcast that interviews prominent indigenous thinkers and allies and helps us all uh, to understand better how we meet the challenges of our time. Of course, you can't really talk about uh, indigenous issues without speaking about reconciliation, and Hunter and I did talk about it quite a lot early on. And we found that while it's of course important to understand the past in order to move forward, that conversation alone never made us feel like we were anything more than shrapnel flying from the site of cultural genocide. So my brother actually got this really interesting teaching a couple months ago that the story of creation has never ended and that we're all a part of it even now. And it completely changed how we thought about ourselves as separate from those who came before us and really let us think about ourselves as connected to the past and connected to the stories that they had. And what's interesting is how we think about the fact that 
we need to carry on this relationship that our forefathers imagined, indigenous and non-indigenous, that the relationship that was intended to go on in abundance as long as, <laughs> as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the rivers flow. So this is actually my ancestor, Mostas. Um, he was a key spokesman for the Cree during the treaty negotiations for Treaty 8 in, uh, in 1899 in northern Alberta. And he famously said, I see the white men coming in and I want to be friends. I see what they bring and I still want to be friends. And it really brought to me and Hunter this idea that as we think about our treaty relationship, we need to think about it in a way that is moving forward together as bringing forward that, that idea. And it really brings to mind this really interesting image of the two row album, which is a symbol of ancient treaty making that was used long ago, it has roots out on the East Coast, and it's of two rows of beads that symbolizes the courses of two vessels, indigenous and non-indigenous, traveling down the river of life together in mutual respect and sovereignty and in peace and in friendship. And when Hunter and I thought about it, all this work that we've been doing on these projects, they're really treaty projects. And they're helping us guide ourselves on our parallel course as we move, move forward in healthy relationship with those that we share our lands with, and that this was always the plan. And what's more, we actually got our first real answers to the questions that we shared, which is who are we and where do we belong? We are all treaty people and we belong right here, as long as the grass grows, the sun shines, and the rivers flow. <laughs>